one of the uh, great points that you made, and not to give too much of it away here, because we want people to, to go to your website, certainly, the virginian.net, and, uh, and order from your merchandising page the, uh, you know, you, you got them there at a really good uh, price. It's worth every penny, worth double what you're charging on there, frankly. Uh, it really, really, really is. I, I haven't been able to put this thing down in the time I've had it, but I wanted to ask you, uh, one of the things you talk about in the interview is you were talking about the Universal Tours and how much you objected to them. Well, I, I, I objected to them on principle, for one thing. As Kelly said, I, I felt that when you, when you bring up uh, hundreds of thousands of people on a yearly basis through a, through a studio and show them how all the, the tricks of illusion are, are created and how uh, the rocks are rubber, and when you get hit over the head with a whiskey bottle... It's candy glass, and it doesn't hurt when it breaks. And how, when you come off a third-story uh, building and fall to the ground, you're actually falling into 10 or 12 or 15 feet of airbag, uh, which is like a big feather pillow. Uh, so it, it, it destroys the illusion in that it takes them backstage and shows them the ways in which we create that, that illusion. Besides the, what we do with our, our emotions and our faces and our bodies and our actions, there's so many different props and, and effects that we use in, in uh, motion pictures to to create that illusion of reality. And if you if you uh, show everyone how that's done, then those illusions are no longer illusions. They become commonplace uh, occurrences. You know how they are created. So your mind tells you, I will not continue to give these people my willing suspension of disbelief. I will I will not believe them. I won't believe them because I know that the rocks are rubber. Well, it's, you know, I could never uh, talk to anybody at the studio that would listen to me about that. And of course, they made uh, more money off the tour than they probably ever made off all the television shows put together. And that's the business they're in is, is making money. So I have no complaint about that. But uh, when the tour started, they used to run these these buses with 100 people uh, in there, uh, with a, with a, a guide, an announcer who would get on the bullhorn and say, here is the wagon train set, or here is the Laramie set, or here is the Laredo set, or here is the Virginian set, and these are the actors and so forth. Sometimes they got it right, and sometimes they introduced me as being in wagon train and Bobby Fuller as being in the Virginian. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that's got to be. I had to sneeze. Oh, that's okay. Folks. No, that's I had, okay. To, I had to sneeze. I'm getting back used to the the Houston allergies that oh, we have. Oh, we, God uh, bless we, you there. <laughs> we've got we've got allergies in every state, and uh, it gets to you for after a while. But as I was saying, they would bring these tour buses in and uh, and disrupt our shooting. We we worked very hard to create a, a shot and get it lit uh, properly and. I rehearse it and get it ready to shoot and ready to put on film, and then they'd show up and, and destroy things. I remember once we had a, a scene which had taken about three hours to set up uh, where we had a, a bunch of uh, outlaws come in and rob the bank, blow up the safe. Uh, there was a, a buggy wreck in the middle of the street. The buggy fell over and the horse fell over, and people flew in all directions. There was uh, the, guy, the guys getting away from the bank with the with the money, and then there was the sheriff, your posse, posse uh, quite quite rapidly and galloping out of town after them. And in the middle of the whole thing, in the foreground, I was having a love scene or a uh, uh, the beginning of a love scene with Angie Dickinson. And as we finally rolled the camera and everything was happening, the bank safe blew up, the explosion was deafening, the buggy turned over, the horse turned over, the people flew in all directions. I had Angie in my arms uh, in the middle of the street, and the tour bus comes right into the shot and says, Now here, folks, is the Virginian set. <laughs> and you can see, there's James Jury and Angie Dickinson. Oh. Well, you know, I just hit the roof. I mean, that was, uh, he worked so hard to, to create this thing and make it work, and then when something comes in and totally destroys the moment and the mood it's it's not it's beyond irritating and frustrating it's it's criminal in my view and mm -hmm. i uh, i had a, a a very good tool that i could use when things didn't go my way on the virginia set i got in the car and went home mm-hmm 
I went home. I thought you were going to say you pulled your six shooter. <laughs> no, no, I went home. I went home. No, that's an even more powerful tool, yes, Paul. The producer, Absolutely, the it's called, called power. Said, <laughs> what are you doing home? We're shooting the Virginian down here, and I said, well, when you get rid of the tours off my set, I'll come back. And they said, well, you know, the tours take precedence over filming, and I said, well, not on my filming, mm. not on not on what I'm doing. You can do anything you want with anybody else. If they don't care to complain, that's all right with me. But they aren't coming on my set, or I'm not going to be there. And that was kind of uh, the bottom line. And right. if I wasn't there, it didn't go. <laughs> so True. Uh, mm-hmm. after that, they kept the tours away. And then the next season, they started again and started to come in. And I went home. <laughs> and they called and said, what are you doing at home? And I said, I'll, I'll be back when you get the tours, rid of the tours. And after about the first, doing that about three seasons in a row, they finally kept the tours away from me altogether. I never had to go home again. Yeah, so, good. you know, <laughs> for that reason, I did have to go home at the, at the end of the day, but I didn't have to go home in the middle of the day. Of the day. <laughs> right. And <laughs> so that's that's how that worked. And, I mean, uh, an actor in a position, as I was in at that time, in the title role in the Virginian, uh, uh, you know, you ha- you have a lot of, influence and you're you're able to to uh influence events to some extent in in the direction you think they should go and in that case i think uh i did a service to all the people that worked in the virginian and all the people that that worked uh that came on the show as guest stars and and actors because they didn't have to put up with the annoyance of having the tour bus come through the set and having a the disruption of that. So, I wanted to uh, I, I wanted to talk, uh, Jim, about the guest stars. Well, we might even have an email about uh, your favorite guest stars in there, Paul. But but I wanted to just ask you. Um, well, let me let me ask you. You know, because yeah, that here we go. This is from uh, a, a gentleman named Stan. He doesn't get the cities from. Uh, but, but you know, I don't know how you answer a question like this. I put you on the spot. Who are your favorite, least, fa- and your least favorite guest stars, and why? Well, I'm sorry. I know. I can't no. get to that, and I and I won't. That's uh, that's far too uh, intimate a question to yeah. be answering in public. Yeah. And, uh, uh Let's just uh, avoid the whole subject by saying I loved them all, and uh, uh, we we were so fortunate in that. Uh, our, our screenwriters had the ability to write big, important, meaty, juicy, uh, interesting guest star roles for a variety of people, uh, actors and actresses that came and played these roles, mainly because they wanted to play the roles. You know, an actor will walk barefoot all over broken glass to get a role that he wants to play. And we had some beautifully created guest star roles, and I, as a result... Because of our 90-minute format, you see, we were able to do this. We had the time to do it. And so we were able to attract the likes of George C. Scott and his wife, Colleen Dewhurst, and uh, Lee Marvin and uh, uh, Charles Bronson and Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and Barry Sullivan and uh, uh, Brian Keith and uh, just uh, Ben Johnson. The, the, le- the list of, of people that worked at our show goes on and on and on. Robert Redford and Harrison Ford when he was a very young actor. So uh, uh, they came to play the parts, and because they came to play the parts, they energized the show every single week. We had someone of, of great uh, prominence and interest to come and play uh, these parts, and when I would go to work in the morning, I would be so thrilled that I was going to go down the hill and do, do, uh, do a movie with Joan Crawford or do a movie with George C. Scott or do a movie with Lee Marvin. And, uh, you know, it doesn't get better for an actor than that, than having people of that caliber to play with and to play against. And uh, uh, people uh, of that ilk uh, give you so much that you can play with. And that's uh, one of the reasons that Virginia was so successful is because he had those actors to play off of. What was, and, it, uh, what was it like working with Betty Davis? Oh, my goodness, it was wonderful. She was uh, just a consummate professional, and I... I've heard uh, lots of stories about how she was mean and nasty on the set and so forth, but uh, not not in any way with uh, any any involvement with us. She was just the perfect lady and couldn't have been more prepared and ready to go and just uh, knew everything about what her character was and was was just delightful and.